Good morning. The committee meets today to receive testimony on the plans and programs of the Department of the Navy fiscal year 2018. I want to thank each of our witnesses for their distinguished service to the nation as well as the sailors, Marines, and civilians they lead who are serving around the world today. In recent months, our nation's senior civilian defense and military leaders have testified to this committee about the severe threats we face around the world. They have reported shortfalls in readiness that our military advantage over our potential adversaries is eroding and the dire need for new modern capabilities. And yet, as Secretary Mattis testified here on Tuesday, the greatest immediate threat that our military faces is right here in Washington. Fiscal uncertainty, continuing resolutions, arbitrary and inadequate caps on defense spending, four more years of the Budget Control Act, and the threat of sequestration. We desperately need a new approach. Unfortunately, the administration's fiscal year 18 budget request is insufficient to meet the challenges we face, rebuild the military, the readiness and capacity of our force, and regain our military technological advantage. It's no wonder, then, that the Department of the Navy submitted over $8 billion in unfunded priorities. Our Navy has been too small for more than a decade. Despite a requirement for more than 300 ships since 2006, the fleet has remained between 270 and 290 ships. These capacity shortfalls have largely driven present readiness challenges. Ten-month deployments are becoming the norm when it used to be six. Carrier strike group present gaps in key regions are annual occurrences. More than half of Navy F-18s are not ready for combat. And there is a backlog of more than $14 billion in afloat and ashore readiness. A Navy of 355 ships with the right mix of capabilities is an appropriate goal. But this budget request makes no progress toward it. However, steps can be taken this year to grow the fleet, and this committee will consider all options. Similarly, this budget request only supports a Marine Corps of 185,000 Marines and 31 amphibious ships, despite a requirement for 194,000 Marines and 38 amphibious ships. Meanwhile, Marine Corps aviation is in crisis. Fewer than half of Marine F-18s are ready for combat. As a result, non-deployed Marine aviation squadrons are short of the number of aircraft needed to train or respond in a crisis. The budget request will help the Navy and Marine Corps to stanch the bleeding, but we can and must do better than that. We need to expand and modernize our maritime forces because our adversaries are not standing still. Indeed, as Chairman Dunford testified on Tuesday, the competitive advantage that the United States militarily has long enjoyed is eroding. In just a few years, if we do not change trajectory, we will lose our qualitative and quantitative advantage. Our Navy and Marine Corps must be sufficiently sized and capable of projecting greater power over greater distances from the air, the sea, and beneath it. We need new concepts of operations and new programs that enable them. In particular, the Navy needs a carrier air wing with greater range and striking power, especially through unmanned platforms. And I continue to urge the Department of the Navy to examine how smaller aircraft carriers could improve current plans for supercarriers and amphibious ships and provide a more capable, credible maritime force. At the same time, as we advocate for increased defense spending, all of us must remain equally committed to exercising rigorous oversight of acquisition programs to ensure the best use of limited taxpayer dollars. I assure you, this committee will. Initial cost overruns more than doubled the cost of each littoral combat ship. Development costs for the ships and their modules now exceed $6 billion, and they keep rising. Meanwhile, key warfighting capabilities of the LCS, including mine countermeasures and anti-submarine warfare, have fallen years, I repeat, years behind schedule, and remain unproven. 
Because of long-running cost, schedule, and performance issues with this program, I support the Department's proposal to pursue as quickly as possible full competition in selecting a new frigate with greater lethality and a survivability. The Navy should procure the minimum number of LCS necessary to keep the workforce viable to compete for new frigates. Secretary Stackley has testified that would be one LCS in physical year 18, not more. I want to emphasize Secretary Stackley testified that would be one LCS in physical year 18, not more. <clears throat> On the Ford-class aircraft carrier, while it's encouraging to see the ship finally delivered to the Navy, the request for the Gerald R. Ford or CVN-78 exceeds the cost cap by $20 million. In addition, the Navy wants to award the contract, the construction contract for the third ship, the Enterprise, or CVN-80, in March 2018 at a cost of $13 billion, which is $1.6 billion more than the previous ship. This is unacceptable for a ship certified to be a repeat design that will deliver just three years later. Secretary Stackley and Admiral Richardson, I would like an ex- Similarly, given the importance of replacing our aging Marine Corps amphibious vehicle and aircraft fleets, the Marine Corps must learn the lesson of past failures, such as the expeditionary fighting vehicle, and deliver these needed capabilities on time, at cost, and up to expectations. Some of the greatest threats and challenges of the future will be in the maritime domain, so it's important for this committee to ensure that our Navy and Marine Corps are not only ready for today's fight, but also developing the capabilities for tomorrow's fights. This budget request is a start, but I am afraid it is not enough. We should not ask our military to choose between readiness and modernization, between present needs and future needs. We owe our sailors and Marines and all of our men and women in uniform more than that, a lot more. They serve and fight and sacrifice for us every single day. Let us do no less for them.